Well, earlier I met up with the boss of another technology giant, Google's executive chairman, Eric Schmidt. He's just revealed the company is funding the training of 100 science teachers for British schools through the Teach First organisation. In an exclusive interview for this programme, we discussed his views on the Eurozone crisis and why he thinks austerity isn't working. But first I wondered what he made of the share price of his great internet rival, Facebook. Did you buy Facebook shares out of interest? Uh, no, I did not. Um, what, what do you think about what's happened? Do you have an explanation? Well, companies go public to raise money, and they went public at the highest possible valuation, and they raised on the order of $16 billion for themselves and their shareholders. How y you have to call that a success. Uh, when companies go public, it takes months before their proper share price is really established. When we went public, I was told that you don't really know what your value of a company is until six to 12 months after you go public, because that's when you have your long-term shareholders. And you think it'll go up? Facebook? I, I wouldn't care to speculate. It's hard to know. More broadly, um, you know, we have this massive meeting going on today in, in Europe uh, to look at the, the, the nightmare that is unfolding in the European economy. As, as a man leading one of the biggest companies in the world, what do you want them to do? Do you, what, do you want governments to think again about austerity? Well, the problem with austerity is austerity by itself is a pretty negative prescription for any human being in these societies. I think the message should be that the European governments as a group need to restructure for globalization. They need to change the way the governments are operating, the way the incentives are work, the power of various vested interests, so that they can be globally competitive. What do you mean by that? All of these democracies have the property that they're, to some degree, influenced by special interests powerful and entrenched interests that are sort of running the country, running the companies, running the political system, running the media, what have you. The fact of the matter is that there are alternative models. So in these countries, they have to sit down and figure out how, what is our strategy for revenue growth. The sum of European growth is around zero and maybe slightly negative in what are essentially self-induced recessions. So what should Greece do? What Greece should do is restructure its economy so that it's more labor competitive. If you look at Greece's last decade versus uh, the northern European countries, Greece has not improved its per unit manufacturing cap uh, capability. It's just not more efficient in the, next, in the last decade, whereas the northern European countries have become so. They became so because of, through very difficult political processes, brutal restructurings of their labor force, changes in their labor unions. In Germany, they lowered wages, it's hard to imagine, with consent with the union after a big fight, all of which is now coming back to them. But the fact of the matter is that's how you do it. Google is investing in education in Britain directly. Why are you doing that? Well, we think we should put our money where our mouth is. And in our case, we're putting some money into something called Teach First, which is a program to try to improve the number of STEM, or that is math and science educated teachers here in the country. We're going to do more than 100 teachers. It'll touch more than 20,000 students. It's a small but important step, I think. And if more companies and more people who have a stake in the success of Britain do this, the better for everybody. But how big an intervention is this? I mean, is, is, this something, is this a sort of very limited thing where you say, we'll do our bit? Or are you actually proposing something bigger, where, where, where you and other big businesses could start really delivering transformational change? We like to show an example. Think of this as a first step. We will do more. I don't care how we get there, but I care very much that Britain have more science and math educated adults. Do you think we are moving to an era in which privacy is no longer the norm? Well, one of the core issues about this technology is that it's naturally invasive of privacy. But I think the reality is that, that since computers are, have almost perfect memories, that, that more and more personal information about you is being aggregated in public, in many cases because you're posting it on places like Facebook, you're choosing to do this. And I think this is a new problem for society. The, the lack of a delete button on the internet is an issue and it will ultimately be solved by a set of changes in so social behavior as well as some more regulation, I think. Eric Schmidt of Google talking to Krishnan there.